Hello, my lovely listeners. I'm Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. Welcome to this episode of Real Health Health and and Weight Loss. Good morning, beautiful human. How are you today? Very, very good. Excited to talk about fasting today. How are you? Ah, awesome. Awesome. I've had such a great couple of days. Life is good for me. So, yeah, really happy. Mm. So, fasting, not eating. It's sometimes a bit of a hard sell, but it truly is one of the most powerful things you can do for your health. I think it is the most powerful strategy for weight loss. What do you think, Lucy? Yeah, I think it's really important to clarify what fasting actually is and the benefits of it and how fasting is not starving yourself because that's what no. people think it is. No, it's totally different. I, I say that, um, you know, fasting is like going for a recreational jog and starving is running from your life being chased by a bear. They really aren't the same. So fasting is the voluntary abstinence of food for a short period of time, completely different to starvation, which is when you have no idea where your next meal is going to come from and you have no control. And I can't imagine it must be absolutely horrific to be starving. Fasting, completely different. There is an abundance of food. Food is everywhere. You can eat whenever you choose, but for a short period of time, for the benefit of your health, you choose not to. I think the um, one of the major differences also is that fasting is easy. You're not actually hungry. So you're choosing to not eat because you're not hungry, whereas with starving, you are hungry anyway. Yes, completely different. And when you're on a low-carb, real-food diet, Fasting is easy. You absolutely can do fasting without significant hunger and you are not, absolutely not starving. Interestingly, to an extent, do you know what is starving? It's calorie restriction. Mm. So calorie restriction, day in, day out, eating less calories than your body needs to actually survive, i.e., you know, Weight Watchers, Light and Easy, Shakes, all of the sort of standard dietary advice, what they did on Biggest Loser. This chronic, chronic meaning for a long period of time, calorie restriction actually induces starvation mode in our body, induces physiological changes of starvation with the lowered metabolic rate that we discussed previously in our calories episode. But intermittent fasting doesn't do that. In fact, it does the opposite. It increases your basal metabolic rate, which is fabulous. Absolutely. And the key, the absolute key, though, is, again, this idea that you're feasting and fasting. Now, feasting doesn't mean, you know, you finish your fast and go on a binge and eat everything in sight, but that you actually have really good, substantial meals pre or post your fasting period. So, I mean, another word that people use is time-restricted eating. You eat in a certain period of time and then you will rest and digest in the other part of the time. Absolutely. So a common intermittent fasting regime might be that people fast, they choose not to eat for, say, 16 hours of the day. So that looks like you have dinner and you wake up in the morning and you don't have breakfast, you wait. And then about lunchtime, you have your first meal of the day, you break your fast, and then you have dinner that night. That's a 16-hour fast. So you had a 16-hour window of fasting from the end of dinner to the start of lunch and an eight-hour window of eating from the start of lunch to the end of dinner. That's a pretty common one. And the key being it's not a continuous eat over that Eight hours. Yes. Oh, indeed. Yes. <laughs> yes. You just have your two meals and they happen to be, you know, essentially eight hours apart, give or take. And 
Another fasting regime where if people have a weight loss goal, this is usually a much more powerful strategy is to extend that fasting window, like for 24 hours, for example. So that might look like having dinner, waking up in the morning, not having breakfast, not having lunch, and then breaking your fast with a lovely substantial dinner at the end of the day. So you've had, say, in this 23 hours of fasting with about a one hour eating window. The longer that you do a fasting window, the more likely you are to get weight loss. Yeah. The way we look at it, and this is the one recommendation we would say to people who want to try fasting is don't do it until your woodshed is open. If you try and fast and you've only just started your low carb lifestyle, you're going to find it really hard. And that's not you know, it's not meant to be hard. We're into easy. We don't like hard. So the people who find fasting easy are usually people that have already been doing low carb lifestyle for six to eight weeks. And it really takes about that long till your body is what we call fat adapted. And the term fat adapted just means that your woodshed is open, that your body is now able to access its fat stores for fuel. So therefore, you can delay your eating. You don't need food for fuel. You still need it for nutrients, but not specifically for fuel. Absolutely. And people do find it easy. Indeed, people who have transitioned to a low carb lifestyle and got their insulin low and that woodshed is wide open often actually find that they start fasting naturally because they're just not hungry which makes a lot of sense. If your body is able to burn fat and you are someone who has quite a lot of fat stores that you want to lose, you you want to lose weight, then your body is able to very happily tuck into your own fat stores without needing fuel from the food that you eat, but just for like a short period of time. Yeah, absolutely. Because we know if you were to suddenly not eat for a month, your metabolic rate would go right down because that's what happens. That's starvation. But when you have, and we, the term we like to use is high eating days and low eating days. So again, a fasting regime is probably unhelpful if you were to do one meal a day every day for the rest of your life. Because again, our body goes, oh, radio, there probably would be some calorie restriction in that. It's quite hard to get all your calories or all your macronutrient requirements just in one meal. But you can have the acronym for one meal a day is OMAD, one meal a day, and two meals a day is TMAD. And then we add in another little one called NOMAD which is no meals a day. And again, if you're new to fasting, that sounds horrendous. Oh my God, why would you go a whole day without eating? But it's honestly easy once your woodshed is open. Absolutely. So yeah, Mez, I just also want to talk about a little thing called autophagy, which is something that was really blew my mind. And I wondered why I didn't know about it. And then I worked out that um, really it's only just come to fruition, the scientific papers and things that have been published about it was um, released in 2016. And this Japanese scientist won the Nobel Prize for Science in 2016. So it's it's really new science. Yeah. So I think the idea is about, in fact, Mears, do you want to talk about autophagy and let oh, our listeners know? I would love to talk about autophagy. So yes, it is quite a new concept to science. And in 2016, a Japanese cell biologist called Yoshinori Oshumi won the Nobel Prize for discovering autophagy. So what is it? Well, it's a Greek word, autophagy, means self-eating. Sounds horrible, but it's actually really good. So basically there's this metabolic switch that we have that we can go from a building phase, like making new proteins, uh, storing fat, it's called the anabolic phase, to a recycling, sorting, sifting through, breaking down, changing, recycling phase called the catabolic state. And this is kind of this this switch. And 
Autophagy is when we go into this, this catabolic state where our body starts to sift through all of our old proteins and cells and look for the cells and proteins that are damaged and then recycle them and clean them out. And It is actually a really powerful healing strategy. There's still a lot that we are yet to learn about autophagy, but it could potentially have the power to prevent and possibly cure all kinds of illnesses. And the only way that we can get into autophagy that we really know of is to not eat for a while. There is some contention as to when autophagy is actually kicks in. It could well happen within 12 hours, maybe 24 hours. There's a little bit of contention out there. But certainly when we fast and we don't eat any food at all, after a while, the autophagy process is turned on with utterly profound health benefits. I've been given this analogy, which I quite liked, that imagine if our body is sort of a fridge and without any fasting, without any periods of autophagy, um, it's just like we're constantly shoving new food, new packets of food into this fridge without ever cleaning it out. Well, autophagy is you just stop putting food in the fridge for a minute, you open up the door, you take everything out, you give it a good clean, and then you just put back the things that you want. That's like autophagy. It's like cleaning out the fridge of your body, if you like. I love that analogy and it has made me think that I need to go and clean out my fridge. (laughs) But, um, yeah, I just think it's so clever. And I think the thing is it's protein. So as humans, we, you know, we've got our three macronutrients of carbohydrate, protein, and fat. We can store carbs a small amount as glycogen. We can clearly store fat. We don't store protein. So when we, when our body doesn't have a source of protein ingested. So when we haven't eaten any, that's when it starts going right. Oh gosh, I've got to make a bit of thyroid hormone or I've got to make an enzyme or I've got to make a bit of collagen. And so, yeah, it goes around and fossix. And it's wonderful because I think, great, might as well clean out those old packet of peas and, um, <laughs> and use that. And I mean, that is a really wonderful, powerful benefit of fasting but it is it does require a little bit to be a little bit more strict I guess in that if you're fasting just to lower your insulin which again is super powerful and burn that fat then you can probably have a small amount of things like bone broth or even some people will have a small amount of cream in their coffee and that still constitutes a fast But if you're wanting to do it for the autophagy benefits, then it's really water. What do you think about tea and coffee for autophagy, Mayers? Have you got any thoughts on that? I do have the thoughts. And my thought is that we actually just don't know. I don't think that there's convincing data one way or the other that coffee and tea affect autophagy. So if people are truly wanting the autophagy benefits, then the best advice I can give them at the moment is water only and probably a bit of salt just to bump them along. Yes, actually electrolytes. Electrolytes can certainly, you need them when you've fasted for certainly more than, you know, more than 24 hours definitely is recommended. The fasting, you know, people go, well, how long should I, should I fast? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think that fasting is a bit like a muscle and you should train it up over time. So people could go straight into a 36-hour fast if they want to, but it might be a bit hard. I think that it's much easier and better and you get less side effects if you start a bit more slowly. So I'll often encourage people to start off with those 16-hour fasts where you basically just skip a meal, skip breakfast or you skip dinner. Now, In my experience, 16-hour fasting does not usually result in significant weight loss for most people. It does for some, but for a lot of people it doesn't. It's really only those longer fasts that are helpful for weight loss, but they are still very healthy for your body for getting insulin down, and it's a good place to start. And then once you feel comfortable with a 16-hour fast, say doing that twice or three times a week, you don't want to do it every day necessarily, then start extending it out. Try doing 
an 18-hour fast, a 20-hour fast, and work up to a 24-hour fast. And doing a 24-hour fast twice a week, maybe three times a week if you're keen, is usually a very powerful and doable strategy for people. Oh, I totally agree. I love the fasting uh, muscle analogy because the thing about it is, yeah, it's some, and there are some days where you go, yeah, I'm going to do a 24 hour fast. And for whatever reason, at 19 hours, you could, you know, eat your own arm off. The thing about fasting is that you are allowed to eat. So if for whatever reason, you're more hungry than you're anticipating, and as we've discovered, it could be a multitude of reasons. It could be that you slept poorly the night before. It could be that you're stressed. There's a whole host of reasons. So the key then would be, okay, stop it for that day. You don't, fasting should be easy. If fasting's hard, then you're not ready. Absolutely. The golden rule, it's almost the only rule that is if you feel bad, stop. Because fasting is free. Pretty much like all of our advice, our health advice, doesn't cost you a penny. And if it's not working for you for whatever reason, then you should stop. For me personally, I find it hard to fast when I'm suffering stress. And my job, like many people's jobs, can be really very, very stressful at times. And I will often fast at work. I will often use work time um, to have my days where I'll just have one meal a day. But I do keep some tinned fish and a few other things at work because if something really horrendous comes along, like some hideous medical emergency or something that I've, I've had to deal with and it's just been yuck and hard and difficult and my cortisol has gone up, it's hard to fast. So I will just give myself a break and I will just go and eat in those circumstances as just being sensible. Absolutely. And I think kindness and compassion is critical because fasting is not a punishment. And so every now and then we'll see people that have been, you know, doing their low carb lifestyle successfully. And for whatever reason, they go off the wagon and their immediate thought is, right, I'm just going to go in and do a 36 hour fast and undo all that damage. It doesn't work like that. We always recommend if you've been off your plan for whatever reason, treat yourself with kindness and compassion and make sure that you fuel your body with some good healthy fats, you know, bacon and eggs or steak and veggies or cheese, whatever it is that you need. And then don't start your fasting again for a couple of days because fasting is not a punishment. No, you nourish your body with fasting. You don't punish your body. Absolutely. The thing I love about fasting, and as you know, I am a sucker for something that's free. It is free. It's also easy. I don't have to think about food. I don't have to think, right, what am I going to have for breakfast? What am I going to, does the dishwasher need emptying? Are there any spoons in the house? Do I have to take Tupperware to work? Am I working between places? Is there a fridge? I don't have to think about any of that stuff. I just get up, have my black coffee, and rock it out the door, powered by my own fat fuel. And I love it. For that simple reason alone, I love it. It's kind of the easy girl's way to lose weight. <laughs> yes, yes. And you also save money as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, absolutely save money because you don't have to eat as much food. You've only got to think about one. So if you're only thinking about one meal, a day and sometimes no meals a day and sometimes two meals a day, really, instead of 21 meals for the week, you might be thinking of 10. How much easier is that? So easy. So easy. So, Lucy, say I am fat adapted and I want to give fasting a go tomorrow for the first time. What kind of preparation should I have? What should I do? What, how would you advise me? So, the first thing I'd do is, I mean, again, this is general medical advice. If you're on um, medications that need to be taken with food, then you'll need to speak to your doctor about that. Or if you're on insulin and things like that, clearly that needs individualized care. But as a general rule, the first thing I would do is just miss your breakfast. So easy. Get up, go, oh, all right, you know, have a coffee. Again, this is how I actually moved on to black coffee was that I was always a latte Lucy um, and then I became a coffee with cream person. And then because I wanted to sort of maximize the benefits of autophagy, I just ditched the cream in my coffee, which was a little hard at first, but now it's actually easy. 
Again, I don't easy. I don't have to clean up a milk jug. I don't have to worry if there's milk in the house. I don't have to wonder if the the almond milk at the cafe is made with seed oils. I don't have to worry about any of that. Keep it simple, lovelies. Keep it simple. So yeah, definitely first step. Just miss your brekkie. Can't be any easier than that. And what about electrolytes? Again, electrolytes. If you're eating two meals a day, I don't bother. You know, I have salt on my meals. Even one meal a day these days, I don't worry too much. Maybe when I first started fasting, the thing is, if during a fast, you feel it all lightheaded, people think it's their glucose. They go, oh, my sugars are low. It's often your salt. So you can just have a little bit of salt. Either you can have it in water, which I find disgusting. So I don't do that. I tend to just have a little bit of it on the tip of my finger and just sort of put that on my tongue and off I go. So again, keeping it as simple as possible. You don't necessarily need to go and buy a whole pile of very expensive fancy electrolytes. Salt is really what you need. Just ordinary table salt. Some people will use light salt or heart salt, which has a bit of potassium in it as well. But really that's the main key. If you're doing long, and maybe we'll do another episode on longer fasts further into our podcast series. But yeah, I think that that's really the basics of it. That's right. And I'd add to that water. Just make sure you drink plenty of water. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely drink water. We get an astoundingly large amount of fluid from our food. And I don't, we often don't appreciate how much fluid we actually get from food. So if you're skipping a meal, you're actually skipping a lot of fluid. And it's very important to replace that. So I think next week we could talk more about fasting. We could go into some of the common side effects and how you can manage those. But I think this is a lovely start on the wonders of fasting. Absolutely. And in the words of the Wiggles, drink, drink, drink some water. (laughs) I will see you next week, Mares. See you later, Lucy. Bye, everyone. So my lovely listeners, that ends this episode of Real Health and Weight Loss. I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. And I'm Dr. Mary Barson. We're from Real Life Medicine. To contact us, please visit rlmedicine.com. And until next time, thanks thanks for for listening. listening.